All right, hi, it's Tara here. We're here with Danny from Easily Accessible Tit, and I love the name, and I love Danny. She's one of my absolute fave clients, but she knows that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I want to hear, Danny, like just, we want to go through your journey a little bit from, um, I met you when you were pregnant and you put, with your first, and you put up on Facebook the other day that memory of, oh my God, I'm going to yoga, check this space. <laughs> so it wasn't even something really in your realm at that time. Um, so just give me a little bit of a, um, a insight into how you were feeling right then when you were first pregnant with your first baby and you had your business, which was the cheerleading business which has moved on a little bit now since then. So a lot's changed. But what was like your first sort of feelings when you first got pregnant? Okay. So um, when I first got pregnant, Alex and I, my husband, were extremely excited. And he actually didn't work with me at the time. He had a completely separate job. And we were stoked. We thought it was going to take us ages to get pregnant. But we actually found out on our honeymoon uh, in Barcelona that we were pregnant when I peed on a stick at McDonald's in the toilet. So that was quite like funny. Yeah. Um, and then it all went a little bit skewed if I actually lost my dad when I was 15 weeks pregnant, which was horribly traumatic experience, obviously, um, from kidney cancer. So yeah. Yeah, cancer. Um, yeah. So I think that was, things started to change for me a little bit there. I went very much when I, I waited a long time to have children because I thought that, you know, my business was always going to be a priority and I was nervous about how children were going to fit into my life and my business. And um, anyway, a friend of mine had recommended um, soon into my pregnancy when I was having a sore back that I go see a chiropractor, which I did. And my chiropractor recommended that I started doing prenatal yoga, which to me just seems so left field because I'm used to being like in a room with loud music with cheerleaders and I was brought up doing gymnastics and dance and I thought, I don't know that I can sit there and be quiet for an hour. Like I didn't actually think I could do it. Um, but it was like, and I still talk about it to this day, it was definitely one of the defining moments like in my life as a person, a mum, and as a business owner. So, I mean, obviously, you know, that that's when I met you and I met some very close friends that I'm like, have met through um, doing your yoga classes as well. And it was very, very interesting. It was like, calming and mellowing and gave me some time to actually reflect on my life and what was important to me and where I wanted to go. And I think a lot of the challenges I started facing then about my dad and then my, uh, well into my pregnancy, 37 weeks, found out my daughter decided to do the topsy-turvy inside and they said that I was going to have to have a C-section. Um, I was like very nervous about that and, you know, yourself and the whole yoga clan got behind me and were like no like you don't have to have a scheduled c-section and you know you can make your own choices and you can research this stuff and had I not have met you guys I would never have known that like I just would have gone down this path and it's really taught me no matter what, what anyone tells you like you always are uh, you can ask as many, many questions as you want and get other advice and other feedback and yeah you know, I was able to basically go back and say to my obstetrician like um, like if I have to have a C-section, like I'll have to have it, but can I go into natural labor? And he's like, yeah, like totally, that's fine. Like, I didn't know you wanted to do that. And I'm like, well, you didn't really give me the option. Mm. So, you know, just like learning what you can and can't ask kind of thing. Um, and then applying that into my everyday life as well. And then bubs came along and I was like, here we go. Like, am I going to do this breastfeeding thing? Like, I don't know how I'm going to have time to do this. And then my husband actually took seven weeks off work and had paternity leave with me. And I can avidly say to this day as a mum who has now nonstop breastfed three and a half years that I do not know where I would be without breastfeeding. I do not know how people have time to not breastfeed to be fair. Um, and like, thanks to, you know, you guys and everyone that I met um, at Norwest private hospital. Thank you ladies. Love you guys there. Um, became very, very confident in, feeding and my own skin and you know it's obviously become a huge passion of mine over time like running my own business um my children have both been in the office space with me 24 7 and Aubrey didn't even know what daycare was until she was like over two years old uh just came with me every day I fed her until she was 21 months old and the only reason I stopped is because I was three months pregnant with little man and I was like 
not coping with <laughs> uh, vomiting and feeding and growing a little human at the same time. So my chiropractor actually turned around and said to me, I would never recommend anyone stop breastfeeding, but Danny, I think you need to think about <laughs> stop breastfeeding so you can focus on having little man. So yeah. I did that and then, um, yeah, like my husband ended up coming in and working the businesses with me as well because he just could see how passionate I was about that all and wanted to give me a helping hand and quit his normal job and came in and helped me. And, um, yeah, basically I we made this great change a year ago to uproot from Sydney to foster and sell one of the businesses I had in Sydney, my cheerleading gym, mm-hmm. so that we could focus more on our family um, and work, keep my other business that was running cheerleading competitions and selling apparel. Mm-hmm. And yeah, we have not regretted the change. I think, you know, having children, losing my dad, learning lots about myself through breastfeeding and yoga and all these people I've met along the way has really made me learn that you can put yourself first without sacrificing the other people in your life, mm-hmm. which is something that I really struggled with before this like I struggled with delegation Mm. I like all of that literally if something had to be done I thought I had to do it myself like I had to Mm. and now I've learned that you know no you can teach other people and if it does isn't perfect the first time it doesn't matter like you can help them through that and you can teach people and people really do want to be there to help you and um yeah like it's just it's been a very interesting journey and then yeah like after I sold that business I really had to think about what I wanted to do because I'm incapable of just doing one thing you know that very well and so yeah I spoke to my husband about it and I'm like I just have really struggled the past three and a half years with feeling like myself like I'm very outgoing bubbly person and everything that you can buy that's like easily accessible in the market for maternity wear and nursing is in my opinion, not very beautiful and um, flattering or easy to go and work out in or go and do yoga in. And because I'm one of those people that works from home and stuff like that, I don't need to get dressed up every day. So I said to him, I'm going to do this active wear range and swimwear range because no one's doing swimwear that has like, you know, attachments and stuff in it as well, especially in Australia. And he was like, oh my God, that is the best idea ever. And I'm like, yeah, like I'm really excited about it. So yeah, the journey kind of started from there and here we are like, you know, launched the website and picked all these patterns and this week my stock's going to arrive and I'm like really excited and hopefully the Australian community and even outside of that, if it goes international, like that would be a dream of mine to show and promote people out there that, you know, like this is the journey that I've had. This is what got me here. And if you want to feel comfortable, look great and like enjoy your breastfeeding life, this is the way to do it. Absolutely. And the key thing you said is that there's a way to look after yourself without sacrificing everybody else. Yeah. One of my key things that I try to mentor women through is that it's a lifestyle and breastfeeding is a lifestyle. And even for those women that haven't, looking after your family and and nurturing your family, yourself, your business. It's the working smarter, not harder, so that your lifestyle is feeding everything. Yes. You're not micromanaging anymore. Absolutely. I see a lot of women trying to micromanage the kids themselves or this or that, trying to get me time. There's not enough time in the day. Yeah, no. And, um, you know, as you know, I've got the the six kids, so there's no way I could micromanage each of them plus Mm -hmm. me. No. Plus my business, plus all of my clients that I'm mentoring yep. and working with. It's, it's about creating a lifestyle that supports all of that so that you're not sacrificing yourself but you're feeding yourself, which is probably one of the decisions to move was a Definitely. part of that. Definitely. Like I think I – like um, uh, three years ago we met um, our business coach and he's been instrumental as well. He's been great. And I think him talking about business and what you should focus on when you're creating a business plan and things like that and saying, you know, you need to find um, what values you you want your business to have yeah. actually made me reflect on that as an individual yeah. and as a wife and as a mom and a sister and, you know, a daughter and kind of be like, you know, my, my ethos, like what I live by now is, does this make me happy? Yeah. Does this make me happy? Mm-hmm. Because if I'm happy, everyone around me will be happy. Like, and that's, that's the kind of person I am. Like I, 
other people, I noticed other people feed off me and I thought, you know what? I'm actually feeding off other people too. Mm-hmm. And for me, like I'm not saying it's for everyone, but for me living in Sydney genuinely made me unhappy. Yeah. The cost of living, everyone being unhappy around you because of the cost of living, <laughs> um, the traffic, like everyone just felt like they were, had to go from A to B to C. They had to buy everything for their kids because it's the, they live in that world of I need, I need, I need, I have to have it now. I thought that was the way of life in general until yes. I stepped outside of that and was like, no, it actually doesn't have to be that way. Like I'm letting myself be that person. Mm. I'm letting myself live that way. And how can I make that change? And so all of last year, we've been here for a year now. I actually lived in Sydney three days a week still to run the business and still coach at the gym because that was still important to me. And um, it was, you know, that's the sacrifice I was willing to make. Like I said to my husband, he wanted to retire to foster. He told me that when we first met. And my yeah. eight, eight years ago was, yeah, right. While I own a business in Sydney, we will never be moving there. And funny how I was the one that quickly t- changed my opinion. And in October last year, like said to him or the year before said to him, let's do it. Like we look at houses. My mum lives in Loriton and they're up the coast. And every time we visit her, we would look at realestate.com and we would find this stuff. And I'd be like, why? Why don't we just do it? So I put my foot down and said, we're going to do it. And if it means I'm driving back and forward to Sydney for a year until we decide what to do with the gym in Sydney, let's make it happen. I'm willing to make that, that change and we need to make it work for us. And he was like, well, I'm not going to say no because, you know, like I've always wanted to live there anyway. So... That's what we did. And I just noticed the change straight away. Like I would come home to foster, you go to Woolworths. Everyone's nice to you. Like everyone knows each other. People are pretty Everyone's cool. not. They're not like, yeah. and like hustle yeah. and bustle. And they just have as much going on. Like they've still got to go to work and feed the kids and take them to sport. And mm. they don't have that same stress attitude towards life. And I just think when you own a business and you're a mum, life's stressful enough anyway, right? Like no matter what yeah. you do, there's going to be stresses. Yeah. And how could I remove that stress and how could I be happy? And how was that going to make other people around me happier as well? Yeah. And that's how we made that choice. And it has like, I'm happier. So mm-hmm. my husband's happier. So my children are happier. So my family are happier. And I still go to Sydney and I still see them. And now my mum's closer. So I get to see her more. And um, it's just given me the time to reflect. And, and like, I'm literally working right now from um, my home office in yeah. and Me too. <laughs> I'm from my home office. My pool and the bridge. Yeah. The Tung Curry Bridge. Yeah. And, yeah. And that for me is like, that's like my calm and my Zen and, you know, having time to actually go and do a Zumba class on a Friday morning and still yeah. be with the kids in the afternoon, but still have two businesses. Like I can yeah. manage and I can do it because I've learned how to delegate and yeah. I've learned how delegating actually doesn't make me more stressed. Someone else is doing it. It makes me happy. I have time to do something else. Yeah. So you've said what you've done in effect, correct me if I'm wrong, is simply really got in tune with what you need to make yourself happy and make your life work for you and your family or business. And that takes a bit of reflection and a bit of guts as well. And then it's really simplified things so that the things that your, your priorities are clear. Correct. And so then you spend your time and your energy in those places. And then the the key is then that a lot of stuff starts to fall into place and unfold. Mm -hmm. And that's what a lot of us are missing. Like, yeah. You're right about that sort of city mentality of go, go, go. We're missing that phase of um, what you said earlier of, of reflection and then actually some shit will just fall into place and you didn't have right. to work your ass off to make it happen. That's exactly and, right. Yeah, letting that unfold. And the other things that you've mentioned, which I want to highlight to everyone, is the mentorship, the guidance in yeah. motherhood, in business, yeah. the support, the tribe all of that stuff coming in together to hold you. And, and they're really, really key. Yeah. I think people, for think people. like yeah. one, one person that you just have to make that change, but it's actually not like I used to live like that too. Yeah. But when you meet people along the way, like I think, you know, there is a misconception, a lot of negativity around people giving advice. Like, you know, yeah. people like when you're trying to make your decision about breastfeeding or not, or, you know, anything about being a mum, a lot of people get very antsy about like, you shouldn't have to take advice to people and you shouldn't have to, you shouldn't give advice to people in case it's the wrong advice. But like at the end of the day, it, it, the more information you can get to a certain extent, it shouldn't feel like information overload. It should feel like that gives you a way to reflect and decide what's going to work for you. 
Yeah. I really want that to resonate with people. Like yeah. that's made a big difference for me. Like my business coach will say stuff and I don't necessarily do everything he says, but I will listen to everything he says and then I'll make my informed decision on what's going to work for me. Yeah. And it's the same with meeting you. Like, you know, like everything we've spoken about, like it's given me a way to reflect like, yeah. Oh, I can actually question that. And yes, I can do things that way. So, you know, I'm very mindful when I, offer people like advice and things like that. And I just say, just do whatever works for you. But this is, you know, this is what was great for me kind of thing. And these are the changes that I made. And I think there's a lot of people out there who probably jealous about the change that we've made to move to foster and what that's brought. And they live in this bubble of, Oh, we could never do that. Yeah. I think people have to actually accept that you can actually do whatever you want. Yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's letting that go, isn't it? Yeah. It is. Like a lot of people say like, oh, will you guys work online and you can take your business anywhere and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, well, there's actually work anywhere that you go, like yeah. just, just saying. And, um, you know, it's how, how much effort you want to put into making that change happen to support you being happier in everything else. Yeah, so that's the key. You have to work out what, what you need and want. Yeah. That's where I love to bring up the definition of wisdom by the dictionary is knowledge, experience, and good judgment. So you need to gather knowledge. You need to learn from your own experience and other people sharing their experience, and that could be a professional coach or mentor. Yeah. As well as just listening to other people's stories. And then the good judgment is you stopping and reflecting. Yeah. On what's right for you. And that's where the decision comes out of. So you need those three layers. And if one of those is missing, then you're not always going to feel like you've made a great decision. Yeah. I want to thank you so much for your time. It's been awesome. You've just given like just the perfect um, story to people because that's what I want women to really understand about connecting into them. Yeah. And then um, really simplifying their life so that what you, the stuff that you've spending your time on is on point, it's productive, it's specific and it's creating your life the way you want to create it and not draining your life and that does take a little bit of reflection to um, come into. So thank you so much. I'm going to come up and visit. Yay! Come on. We've got plenty of space. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm going to say bye now but I am going to come up and visit because I'm baby free. When I finally have a child free day, I'll be there. Yeah, you do. All right, have an awesome day. Thank you so much. Bye.